Dragons in a Bag, Zeta Elliot. Chapter 13. When we land, Ma pushes open the guardhouse door. I follow the butterfly out and see that we are facing the street inside of the park. A bus lumbers along Flatbush Avenue, and the few joggers going in and out of the park barely notice me and Ma as we emerge from the guardhouse. I scan all the benches, and I feel a little disappointed when I don't find Amber Rose. I want him to know that Trub and I completed our mission, and I want to, him to see that Ma's okay. Part of me feels like I have to prove myself, especially since Ma's had trouble with her helpers in the past. I want Amber Rose to know I'm not like the others. Once we collect the dragon for Kambita, everyone will know that I'm serious about being Ma's apprentice. Should we head over to Vic's place, I ask Ma. She glances up at the darkening sky and shakes her head. It's too late for a messy extraction, and it will be messy. We better think on it tonight and come up with a plan. Ma opens her purse and takes out the mint tin. In you go, she says to the red butterfly. I don't see how it will fit, but the butterfly perches on mom's hand and instantly shrinks so that it can settle inside the small tin. Just until we get home, Ma says. She snaps the lid shut before tossing the tin back into her purse. Then Ma leans on her cane and heads up the block. Your mama must be wondering what happened to you. I feel a pang of guilt as I think about what mama's day must have been like. I travel to the realm of magic while she was struck in court. Did the judge rule in our favor or are we harm homeless? I wonder what Ma will say when I tell her I want to work with Ma. The street lights flicker on as the night settles over the noisy, busting city. I miss the peace and calm of the bambas and hope it won't be long before I get to see that world again. But if Ma goes back with me, she'll have to stay with Sis. Maybe Ma's plan to find the last dragon will take a long time. A messy extraction sounds like something painful that happens at the dentist's office. Even though I'm mad at Kavita for stealing the dragon, I hope no one gets hurt. Ma doesn't say a word, but she walks her apartment building. But when we reach her block, she clears her throat and asks, You know what you're going to tell your mama about today? I nod and say the truth. I hope I sound confident, but Ma must know how nervous I am because she gives my shoulder a squeeze. I give myself a pep talk the rest of the way. Mama loves me. No matter what I say or do, that will never change. Mama is pacing back and forth in front of Ma's building. The clothes she ironed so carefully this morning are now rumbled, and her face shows how tired she feels. But when she sees us coming at the block, Mama rushes over, kneels down, and hugs me hard. Jackson, where have you been? I've been worried sick. Mama pulls back and examines me from head to toe. She stands up and looks at Ma. You need to get a cell phone. Ma just laughs. For what? I try to warn Ma with my eyes, but she's not looking at me. Mama hates it when people don't take her seriously. She puts one hand on her hip and says in the voice that's a bit too loud. What for? So people can reach you, Ma. I didn't know what happened to you two. You could have left a note. Ma glances at me and wipes the smile off her face. Sorry about that, she says in a sincere voice. I didn't think we'd be gone too long, but things didn't quite go as planned. They never do with you, Mama muttered under her breath. I decided now's a good time to change the subject. Subject. How did it go in court, I asked Mama. She smiles and strokes my cheek. We got to stay, baby. That means the landlord can't go ahead with the eviction. So we can stay in our apartment, I asked hopefully. For now, Mama says, but I still have to go back to court next week. Well, Ma says, I'm glad it's all worked out. I better go see about supper. Wait, I grab hold of Ma's hand to keep her from walking away. Then I reach out and grab hold of Mama's too. This is my chance. I can be the bridge between them. Maybe we should stay with Ma for a while, I suggest. Mama frowns and tries to pull away, but I won't let go of her hand. You can stay if you want, Mama tells me. I need to keep an eye on the apartment. But there's no water, I remind her. No water? Ma looks kind of mad, so I tell her more about the awful landlord. Last week, he turned off the gas, too, so we couldn't cook. Mama looks embarrassed. Maybe I said too much. We manage with the microwave, she tells Ma. You can't manage without running water, Mom, Ma replies. You better come upstairs. Mama doesn't budge. The judge ordered the landlord to turn the water back on within 48 hours. Ma just grunts. Don't hold your breath. Then she coughs a couple times before saying, Listen, Alicia, I know I made a fuss this morning, and I'm sorry for that. You just called me at a bad time. But I want you to know you're always welcome here. You and Jessica stay in your old room. It hasn't changed since you left. Mama squeezes my hand a little too hard and looks at the ground. Mama taught me everything I know about manners, so I know it's not polite to ignore 
an offer of hospitality. Ma tries again. I know things haven't been right between us, but you will always be family to me. That reminds me of something I promised Trubbed. I pull at mom's arm until she bends low enough so that I can plant a kiss on her cheek. Grandpa says hi, I say quietly. Mama looks at me hard. Who says hi? I swallow and force myself not to look at Ma. If I look at her, she'll think I need help, and I don't. I've already decided I'm not going to lie to Mama. I take a deep breath and say, I met my grandfather today. Mama rolls her lips together. That's what she does when she's trying not to lose her temper and say something she might regret. Mama's lips are sealed, but I can almost hear her counting to 10. That's what she tells me to do when I get angry. Finally, she opens her mouth and asks, how did that happen? Ma coughs silently, but I need to tell the story on my own. I went to Ma to, with Ma to make a delivery today. Ma quickly rolls and then unrolls her lips. I can tell she's angry, but not with me. You did, huh? That sounds interesting. Mama talking to me, but still glaring at Ma. I tried to get her eyes back on me. It was, but then we, we got separated. And Trub, your father, he came to help me, Ma, and he took me out for a burger. Ma gives me a disapproving frown. So I add, I like him. He's nice. Ma rolls her eyes this time and says, never trust a first impression, Jax. It takes time to really get to know somebody. True, Ma says, although sometimes you got, you just got to go with your gut. Stay out of this, Ma. I guess Ma doesn't hear the warning in Mama's voice because she says, I'm just trying to tell the boy, Mom explodes. I don't need you to tell my son anything. I left him with you for one day and you've already got him mixed up in your, your mess. Ma leans heavily on her cane and for a moment I think she's going to walk away, but she doesn't. Instead, she leans forward so her face is just inches away from my mama. You know what, Alicia? I'm a private person, but I don't believe in keeping secrets. I told Jax the truth and you should try it sometime. Uh-oh, mama's eyes flash with anger. Don't you tell me how to raise my son. Ma just shrugs. I didn't come to you. You brought Jax to me. I had no choice, mama cries in exasperation. Sure you did, Ma. You could have taken him to court with you. You could have chose to leave him with me. Whatever you like it or not, things are going to be different from now on. What's that supposed to mean, Mama asks. I tug her hand so that Mama looks at me instead of Ma. I decided to become Ma apprentice, I say, with a mixture of fear and pride. Ma blinks twice. Mama blinks twice, but says nothing at first. I force myself not to look away, even when I see tears filling up my mom's eyes. Oh, Jax. Mama finally says with a sigh. Then she lets go of my head and sinks it to the steps that lead up to Ma's building. Ma gently peels away my hand from her hand and says, I'm going to start supper. Come on up whenever you're ready. As she climbs the stairs, Ma puts a hand on Mama's shoulder and Mama doesn't respond. I watch Ma go inside her building and then I take a seat next to my mother. Her fingers are laced together and she holds them over her mouth like a net that will catch words she doesn't want me to hear. The tears in Mama's eyes don't fall. After a while, she puts her hands on her knees and says, Where did you go today, Jax? I try to use as few words as possible. First, we went back in time by accident. Then, Trub took me to the realm of magic to find Ma. Then, we came home. He took me there once, Mama tells in a strange, sad voice. I know, I said quietly. Trub told me you didn't like it much. Mama shakes her head and puts her arm around my shoulders so she could pull me close. This world is the only one that matters, Jax. This is where you live. This is where you belong. Mama's been through a lot today. It could be easier to just agree with her, but I try a different approach. But what if we can make this world better? Don't you think we should try? Mama thinks for a moment. Then she shifts on the stairs so that we're sitting face to face. Magic won't bring your daddy back, Jax. Mom's voice is so soft and low that at first I'm not sure I heard her correctly. But then my cheeks start to burn and I feel hot tears filling up my eyes. Mama becomes a blur. I blink a few times and Mama comes back into focus. Her face is full of love that gives me the courage I need. I know that, Mama, bad things happen and sometimes there's things we can do. But this time there is something I can do. I want to help Ma return the last dragon. Mama's eyebrows shoot up. Dragon? Oh, Jax. Mama shakes her head slowly like there's no hope for me, like I'm lost to her already. I rush on trying to reassure her. I can do it, Mama, and I, I have to because it's sort of my fault that the dragon is still stuck here in Brooklyn. You don't have to do anything, Jax, Ma says firmly. Ma can handle her business without you. It's her job, not yours. I know I tell Mama, but Ma's going to retire soon, so I need to do this, Mama, please. Mama doesn't say anything for what feels like a really long time. Then she scoots closer and puts her arm around me once more. 
why don't you tell me what it's like for you in that other world? I open my mouth and say, sure, but suddenly my stomach growls. No roars with hunger. Mama laughs and pokes me in the belly. You got a dragon in there, she says with a smirk. I laugh too and clench my empty stomach. Can I tell you about the dragons and the dinosaurs and the babos over supper? Mama kisses me on the forehead and says, sure. I take Mama's hand and together we go upstairs to join Ma.